Last offseason, edge rusher Zadarius Smith crossed over from the dark side, joining the Minnesota Fighting Vikings after a couple seasons with the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers, and he truly was the value-free agent signing of the offseason, where Zadarius uh, came in. Uh, it was a big-time part of the culture. Uh, he was actually the one who started the Kirko Chains thing, or him and Christian Derrissa, like everything's part and parcel, right? So that, that's fantastic. And he and Daniil, I mean, were supposed to be the best edge rushing duo in the National Football League, and they kind of were, but at different points. I mean, Zadarius tore it up at the beginning of the season, Daniil in the second half of the season, so they kind of got it together, just not at the same time time right but you know the question is what's going to happen with Zadarius this offseason even though last offseason he signed a three-year deal uh, with most of these contracts the back end uh, seasons are pure toilet paper uh, so what's going to happen with the Vikings and Zadarius this offseason actually there's a lot of factors that go into this so respect Zadarius uh, last season at 30 years young uh, got himself 10 sacks 78 pressures was fourth most in the NFL and also midseason like he was in the running for defensive player of the year uh, but unfortunately banged up his knee in the Bills game and just really wasn't the same after that and uh, it, it is a very stark split so uh, the Bills game week 10 was the ninth game of the Viking season up until then he was absolutely nails man 55 pressures most in the NFL by 11 by the way uh, nine and a half sacks which is third in the league at the time uh, 88.8 PFF pass rushing grade which is fourth uh, in the NFL amongst edge rushers and then the final eight games so final seven games of the regular season he sat out week uh, week 18 against the Bears and then the wild card game uh, there, there was a drop off and yeah i mean you could certainly attest uh you can certainly can uh, attribute a lot of it to the injury some of it could be age some of it could be whatever but uh pressures dropped to 27th in the league uh only got half a sack the final eight games as well as a 72.3 pff pressure grade which is 26 so you know, quite a stark difference between uh, you know, what happened up until the Bills game where he banged up his knee and then the second half of the season. And Zadarius's contract, it, it's interesting, where the Vikings uh, can free up around $13.66 million in cap space by moving on from Zadarius because uh, a lot of uh, a lot of his contract is still tied up in incentives. Uh, and also his $9.45 million base salary for 2023, 5.05 of it is uh, becomes fully guaranteed uh, on March 17th, the third day of the new league year. So... I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, there, but the Vikings will have to make a decision sooner rather than later. And I think a lot of factors do go into it. Number one, all right, so going with the bring him back, pressure when healthy, right? So when he, when he is healthy-ish, although we did see him in the early part of the season uh, sort of favor that knee, he missed a couple plays, but whatever. Overall, when he's healthy, which, by the way, the big issue uh, for his final season with the Packers was that back issue uh, where he only played one regular season game and the playoff game. Uh, but the back issue wasn't a thing this year, so you do like to see that. But when he's healthy, he's still one of the best in the NFL at generating pressure. You got that leadership. Uh, he, he even... Like, even before uh, the start of the season, like, he was getting the defense together. They were going out to dinner. They were going to games together. It, it was fantastic. I, I think he was one of the big reasons why this team gelled so quickly uh, and a big reason why this team won 13 games. Uh, if they stick with the 3-4... This is a no-brainer. So you still have one of the best edge rushers uh, in a 3-4 screaming off the edge as a pass-rushing outside linebacker. Or if Mike Pettin is named defensive coordinator, which is still a real possibility. Uh, uh, of course, Pettin and uh, Zedaris go way back like chiropractic back to the Green Bay days, as well as, of course, this year working together. Uh, but... Uh, reasons to cut or trade him. Now, I, I do think that he does have some marginal trade value because I, I think that uh, a team that's needy for pass rushers, uh, I think that Zadaris' contract is very team-friendly. So it wouldn't be a lot, but if the Vikings were to move on from Zadarius, potentially getting like a late day three selection would be better than nothing, which uh, again, if you cut a player with years remaining, uh, that does not enter into the compensatory pick formula. Uh, but reasons to move on it does turn 31 in September. Also health has been issued the last couple of seasons, 13.66 uh, million in cap savings if they cut him. Uh, and also if the Vikings revert back to a four, three, Zadarius has never been a, a, a regular hand in the dirt 4 3 defensive end. So uh, that could be something to factor in. Plus, you know, going back to Daniil and Zadarius, I think it's actually very unlikely that both of them are back next year. I, I think that it's going to be an either or scenario. And it does depend on, on what scheme the Vikings want to play. If they want to play with an odd man front, I think that Zadarius could be back and Daniil could be traded. If they go back to an even front, uh, I think that Daniil would be extended and retained and Zadarius could be cut or traded. So it's kind of weird. 
kind of weird to think, but the Vikings current edge rusher room, you got Daniel, you got Zedarius under contract. You got one on Patrick Jones second, Luigi Villain, uh, the former UDFA, Kenny Willick is coming back from injury. And then you got Curtis Weaver and Benton Whitley on futures deal. So I don't know, like this was a, a great year uh, with Zedarius. Is there going to be a sequel? I don't know. I don't know. I, I would bet as of right now, yes, uh, but maybe they also rework that deal. Maybe they toss in a couple more incentives. Maybe they lower his cap number. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to work around it. But either way, like Zedarius, when he's healthy, is still that dude. Uh, but will he be that dude with the Vikings or somewhere else? TBD. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Will Zedarius Smith be back in, in purple in 2023? Uh, although he could go back to Baltimore and that'd be purple too. Did you know you originally signed with the Ravens this offseason? Eh, whatever. Anyways, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.